The Jewish ultra-Orthodox community in Israel takes religion seriously, very seriously, trying to live in the 21st century by rules that were written in the 14th century BCE. One example, boys and girls stop socializing when they turn 12. We prefer not to mix um, uh, genders at all. Many religious spaces for the ultra-Orthodox, or Haredi, are segregated by gender. They enter the sanctuary of their synagogues through separate doors and sit with a cloth partition between them. The most famous example is probably the Western Wall in Jerusalem. Jewish men and women both go there to pray, but are separated by a fence. Because in the Haredi community, religion and culture are one and the same, the standard of modesty applies to every aspect of life, even to the beach. We very like hey, it. So <laughs> Of course! <laughs> but for Haredi women, a mixed gender beach is simply out of the question. Because of a movement by the Jewish ultra-Orthodox community, there are beaches like this one in every shore municipality in Israel, which separate men and women. So why did you choose to come to this beach specifically? Because this is a beach where there, there are only girls here. And it's better uh, fun when only girls see you. A law passed in 1979 requires every shore town to have a segregated beach for the Haredi community. In Tel Aviv, that's Nordau Beach. The wooden walls make sure that passers-by can't see in. Women are allowed on the beach on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and men are allowed on the beach on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So if this beach wasn't here, would you be able to go to the beach at all? No, no, we will go only to the beach where well, just women. The Haredi want their own way of life and have tried to segregate other public spaces such as buses and failed. According to one researcher, the reason the Haredi successfully segregated beaches was their rhetoric. Instead of basing their argument in religion, the Haredi claimed that without segregated beaches, they wouldn't be able to exercise their inalienable right to go to the beach. But some say that gender segregation in other parts of society is holding the Haredi community back. It's a compromise. A few years ago, the Israeli Council for Higher Education started a program to separate Haredi students by gender at general universities. The Haredi men and women not only take separate classes, but their program is located on a different campus than the general population. And this separation is not symmetric. Orna Kupferman is a professor at Hebrew University, which has a separate program for Haredi students. She sees a few different problems with separating Haredi students from the rest of the student body. Kupfernam says the money for the Haredi program is spent on special teachers and special TAs. It costs a lot of money and uh, we calculated it and we calculated that uh, it's something like 70 percentage of, uh, of, of the cost of studies is just to support this separation. Money that could be better spent, she says, by giving Haredi students a monthly stipend. I am sure that if we uh, tell these students come to a mixed uh, uh, program and get every month uh, 5,000 shekels, and, and this is the cost, it will be much better for them. Kupfernam says because the segregated classes are so small, the Haredi students don't get the best teachers. And because the segregated classes are on a different campus, the Haredi students don't get full use of the facilities, libraries, and labs. So what they get is education of a lower quality. And, and, and there is no question about it. That's uh, just looking for, at the numbers. When Haredi students attend segregated classes, they only interact with and hear the ideas of other people who share their religious convictions. Kupfernam says integrating Haredi students into the general population exposes them to a more diverse set of opinions. And the general population students also benefit. I mean, we don't know each other, and, uh, and that's another drawback of the segregation. Uh, we want to know them. We want to enjoy them. Kupfernam fears what could happen if Israel continues to allow segregation in the classroom. Uh, once we do it at the universities, uh, the, the same argument then can be to, to the market. Yes, uh, we, we want them to work, and, uh, and they're used to segregation, so why stop here? Uh, so I think that even for women, with all our willingness to, to help them, uh, we should insist. But for many Haredi women, segregated classes may be the only way to a higher paying job and a path out of poverty. The Haredi colleges were open for these women, started by women, um, uh, for women because otherwise uh, women wouldn't go and wouldn't uh, have this 
higher education. Sipi Yaram is a member of the Haredi community. She attended Hebrew University before there was a segregated program for Haredi students. For me, going to the Hebrew University was not an easy, an easy thing. But Yaram has friends who only got their degrees because they had a separate option. Had there not been a place that opened uh, and it was segregated, she would never learn it. And there are thousands of women like that. We prefer to study in a segregated um, um, environment. Yaram says separate classes for men and women are good for the Haredi community. This is the way to empower Haredi women and taking it down would just be against the Haredi community. Critics may see building walls as something that holds Haredi women back, but Haredi women say those walls are their doorway to success in the 21st century. Reporting in Israel, Allison Caliguire, NCC News.